What's going on guys, Crispy Flakes here, and for today's video we are repicking the 2008 NBA Draft. Uh, before we start doing that guys, do me a quick favor and hit that like button for more of these rate draft videos. Okay, so this uh, draft had a, an MVP in it, an MVP point guard by the name of Derrick Rose. I'm a great superstar all around point guard, Russell Westbrook. And um, some solid building pieces and guys like Kevin Love and Brooke Lopez and, you know, players like that. And also some busts. I mean, Michael Beasley, well, I don't really say he's a bust, uh, but he didn't really live up to his number two pick overall potential that uh, scouts thought he would be at that time. So as always, guys, we are repicking the top ten draft picks. Let's get this draft going right here. And keep in mind when you look at the rosters here, um, they are not 100% accurate. They are the 0708 rosters, I believe. Um... The main franchise players are correct, but there's a few, like, role players that don't really belong there. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind. So, the number one pick goes to the Chicago Bulls, in which they took Derrick Rose. Let's take a quick look at this team roster right here. Um, at the time, you know, this team wasn't all that great. They had Ben Wallace, who uh, came from the Detroit Pistons. At this point in his career, man, like, once he left the Pistons, he wasn't exactly the same player. Uh, Lou Aldang great small forward at the time man like played a lot of minutes Kirk Heinrich uh, serviceable point guard Ben Gordon who was actually a really top-notch shooting guard at this time um but you know Kirk Heinrich's fine and everything but I think the number one draft pick here guys I'm sorry to say it's not gonna be Derrick Rose based off on what we know now you know and all the injuries he's had with the Bulls I'm hoping by avoiding that draft pick maybe he could avoid those injuries you know in like some uh, alternate reality so with the number one draft pick going to the Chicago Bulls um, I have a player who we talked about already, superstar point guard in my opinion, man, great all-around player, man, does it all for you out the rink's tenacity, and that is Russell Westbrook. I know I'll call him Westbrook at times, but uh, I will say that he's gained my respect a bit more this season, although I still don't think he's the right player to pull alongside Kevin Durant, but maybe in Chicago, man, um, it can be his team, and who knows what, what, what Russell Westbrook would have done on the Chicago Bulls. Number two, Miami Heat. This draft pick, they took Michael Beasley, man. Um, I actually have Derrick Rose going number two. The reason I'm saying that, guys, is because I'm not, like, superstitious, but I am a little stitious. And I'm thinking of, like, an alternate reality. If Derrick Rose avoid, avoided going to Chicago Bulls, maybe he would have avoided those injuries and he would still be that MVP player, man. Can you imagine, like, if Derrick Rose is on this team with Dwayne Wade and then, like, LeBron James and Chris Bosh ended up going to this team? It would have been crazy. It would have been fun. Who knows if that would have happened? Um, but I have Derrick Rose going number two to the Miami Heat. And, uh, man, like, Derrick Rose, like, man, he's such a fun player to watch. Uh, I'm not, like, a huge Bulls fan or anything, but, I don't know, he was just him being, like, the youngest MVP ever. It was really fun to watch, and seeing him go down and struggle through all those injuries was kind of a sad sight to see. Um, so, I hope he I hope he gets better as a player, uh, but that remains to be seen. Um, okay, number three, Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, at the time they did trade this draft pick to the Memphis Grizzlies, we're not going to assume they do that in this case. Uh, looking at the team needs right here, guys, we have... Um, or the players they have on there. We have Al Jefferson, uh, Ricky Davis, who is fine, man. Never really lived up to his draft potential either. 85 overall, I think that's kind of a stretch. Uh, Randy Foy, yeah, he's fine. Marcus Smart. See, Marcus Smart's not even on this team, man. That's what I'm talking about. Like, So basically, the first three players, Al Jefferson, Ricky Davis, and Randy Foy, was on this team. Um, whoever made this roster kind of screwed this one up, but that's all good. Um, but what they don't have is really a great center, man. Like, Al Jefferson, more of a power forward, in my opinion, man. More of a finesse type of player. So, I have a player to team up alongside with Al Jefferson. And that is a player by the name of, way down this list, DeAndre Jordan, man. DeAndre Jordan went, like, number 45 in this draft. Wow, that does not look like him at all. <laughs> uh, but I have DeAndre Jordan going go number three in this draft. Uh, good for a 20-20 game every now and then, man. I'm um, going to get you rebounds every single game. Going to block shots, play defense, do things like that. I will say that a big part of his success is playing alongside a guy like uh, Chris Paul, who really always makes his centers great. You know, guys like Tyson Chandler back in the day, uh, even David West. So he always seems to make his centers really good. So who knows how DeAndre would have turned out without Chris Paul. Uh, but based off what we know, I have him going number three. Number four, this is where the, uh, at the time, Seattle Supersonics, it was the Seattle Supersonics, but uh, the OKC Thunder actually took Russell Westbrook. Of course, he's not here anymore uh, looking at the team needs. They have, uh, see, really, Kevin Durant, that's the only one showing up on here, guys, so I apologize for the rosters once again. Uh, and most accurate one I could find, unfortunately. So if you guys ever make rosters, you know, send them my way. Uh, but the, to this team, I have a guy teaming up alongside with Kevin Durant and a player who... Uh, Based off the past two seasons, 
you know, it's kind of ruined his legacy a bit here. It kind of ruined his reputation. But you got to remember the time when he was on the Minnesota Timberwolves. This man was amazing. Superstar caliber uh, power forward. And that is a guy by the name of Kevin Love. I will say that I think Kevin Love's confidence has been destroyed by LeBron James. Um, but, man, we all remember the numbers he put up. We all remember why he was traded for Andrew Wiggins. So, sure, hindsight's twenty twenty and everything. But um, Kevin... You know, Kevin Love, Kevin Durant, that duo, I think would have been pretty deadly early on in their career. Number five, Memphis Grizzlies. At this time, they actually traded Kevin Love for OJ Mayo. Uh, big mistake right there, if you ask me. Looking at their team needs, uh, sure they had, I don't even think Rudy Gay was on the team at the time. Damon Sotomayor, I'm going to stop looking at this, guys. I'm, I apologize. I'm going to stop looking at that. It'll just like ruin everything. Uh, but at this time, man, they took, you know, they traded for OJ Mayo. And I have them taking a power forward here. And this power forward is pretty solid in my opinion. Um, kind of a stretch forward. He's really add three ball to his game. Can throw it down. They call him E. Block for a reason. Basically, he plays defense. And that is, of course, Serge Ibaka, who I think is a great player, man. Like, um, you know, he's he's that perfect number three player on that OKC team behind Kevin Durant and uh, Russell Westbrook because he really plays into, like, a team mentality. Uh, but I think he could be a lot better player if he really had the touches more. Like, he's got a nice midi out there. Uh, number six, we have the New York Knicks, who at this time took Danilo Gallinari, eventually traded to the uh, Denver Nuggets, I believe, for Camilo Anthony was part of that deal. I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, but, yes, at this time, man, and actually I think their roster looks a little bit more realistic. Here we go. Uh, they had Zach Randolph, Wilson Chandler, you know, players like that. Uh, not these guys right there. Not Danilo Gallinari, whatever. Uh, that's what they drafted, but at this time, you know, I think that they still needed an inside presence on this team. Here we go. So we want to look at. They had uh, Stefan Marbury, uh, Jamal Crawford, David Lee, who was actually pretty solid on this team, but not really a good solid center. So I have them taking at number six, guys. Um, a player who I don't think he should be number one option on a team, and the Brooklyn Nets kind of attest to that. But I think if he was like a number two or number three option on a good team with a good superstar, uh, that team would be deadly. And that is Brooke Lopez. And this guy, uh, honestly, I think he's kind of a chucker, guys. I think he takes a lot of shots, so he would need to play into a team mentality. Um, but that would make to be seen if he would actually do that. I, I actually always like Brooke Lopez, um, just not in my team, because he seems to be the only card I ever pull in those packs for some reason. All right, number seven, we got the L.A. Clippers, man. And they took Eric Gordon. And, uh, yes, the Clippers ended up getting CP3 in the future, so maybe I don't want to mess, uh, mess with the past too much here. But... It's really hard to pass about this player at number seven. And this is a guy who was very underrated coming into this league, who turned out to be really great on the Phoenix Suns and pretty good so far in the Miami Heat. And that is a player by the name of... Man, he's way down this list. Unless I already passed him. Oh, my life. Where is this dude at, man? <laughs> I'm a, I think I already passed him. Like, like, no way he's that far down. Come, Oh, here he is. Okay, I, okay, I was, like, way far down, man. He was picked, like, really late. And that is uh, Goran Dragic, the Dragon Man. Uh, not the Dragon Man, just the Dragon. And I'm just saying, man. So I have him go number seven to the LA Clippers. A uh, yeah, good scoring plunker out there. Can get players involved and things like that. I'm a fan of his. I'm a fan of his indeed. Uh, number eight, we have the Milwaukee Bucks. At this time, they took Joe Alexander. Who? Exactly. So really, any player, man, is going to be better than Joe Alexander. Uh, but I actually have them taking... Um, Nicholas Batum here, guys. They already had Michael Brown on the team. So, yeah, Eric Gordon... I I potentially could take Eric Gordon. I'm really not a huge fan of his, to be honest. Maybe I'm hating, um, but he's had a lot of injuries, so I don't know, man. Not really a huge fan, but I have Nicholas Batum going number eight to the Milwaukee Bucks. Here we go, man. And, uh, you know, Nicholas Batum, uh, I've not really watched a lot of his games. I know he's a good uh, three-point shooter. I think he's a lengthy defender. Things like that. So, I don't really know too much about him, man. I've um, not really watched a lot of Portland Trailblazers or Charlotte Hornets or anything like that. The teams he, you know, the team he's on now. Uh, but we actually have the Hornets, or at the time, the Charlotte Bobcats with the number nine draft pick. They took DJ Augustine here. And uh, maybe this logic right here that I'm about to throw at you guys. <laughs> maybe it should have made him number one draft pick. But I have George Hill going to, at number nine. And the reason I'm saying that is because maybe, just maybe... This Charlotte Hornets Bobcats team could have done the Greg Popovich and ended up training George Hill for Kawhi Leonard. But with that logic, maybe he should have went number one, right? And also, you know, Eric Gordon probably you know, could have went right here too. That would have been fine. Um, but I have George Hill in hopes that ends up being Kawhi Leonard one day. 
for you Charlotte Bobcat or Hornet fans out there, whatever the name is now. Number 10, we have the New Jersey Nets, now the Brooklyn Nets, who took Brooke Lopez. Um, this team actually uh, was pretty solid, man. They had Vince Carter, uh, Jason Kidd, Richard Jefferson, Sean Williams. So, you know, they don't really need a shooting guard. Otherwise, I would have took Eric Gordon right here if Vince Carter was not on this team. Um, but I actually have them taking an inside presence. A player who was solid on the Indiana Pacers um, early, on, early on in his career, uh, but turned out to be kind of not so great. So, you know, here's the hoping, man, he would have picked up some slack and done some pretty solid things over there on the New Jersey Nets. And that is... Where's he at, man? Russell Wilson, this dude's a football player, isn't he? <laughs> He's a freaking quarterback. Oh, man, another player, man, that I'm probably overlooking right here. Uh, where's he at? Where you at, though, man? Yo, where the heck is Roy? I know Roy Hibbert was drafted here, man. A lot of, dude gets a lot of hate. I mean, this pick was going to be Roy Hibbert. But for some reason, whoever made this roster, for some conspiracy reasons that I do not know, man, is not on here. At least I, I'm, not, I'm not seeing him. So, in that case, Nikola Pekovic, he's pretty solid too. Uh, but I actually, okay, in this case, man, I'm going to freaking take Michael Beasley, okay? Uh, we'll have Michael Beasley. Actually, guys, on the Rockets, he's pretty good. Um, he's a good scorer. You know, he's getting about, what, 15, 20 points a game alongside James Harden. Um, but kind of screwed up early on in his career. Didn't really focus correctly. So, we have Michael Beasley going number 10 to the New Jersey Nets. Although, I wanted to be Roy Hibbert. But... For some reason, he's not on the roster. Anyway, guys, thank you guys all so much for watching. Give me your uh, predictions. Not really your predictions, but give me your top 10 draft picks from this draft and see how they align with mine. Thank you all so much for watching. And peace out, my friends.